Sanctions have been used in war since the ancients. Sanctions. Asset freeze. Euphemisms for blockade, strangulation of an economy, slow but sure starvation of the means to wage war. But have they ever worked? It's a legitimate tool of warfare, but is it an effective one? Do join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. The US and its Western allies have imposed a barrage of sanctions on Russia in response to its illegal invasion of Ukraine. But despite repeated waves of financial restrictions, the Russia's war economy remains standing. Experts agree that if Ukraine is to defeat Russia and successfully rebuild after the war, it will require substantial sums of money, most likely exceeding what the West wants or is able to provide. But there is a huge pool of money available outside the West's budget. 300 billion US dollars worth of frozen Russian state assets held in Western jurisdictions. Frozen Russian reserves could tilt the war effort in favor of Ukraine, while significantly reducing the financial burden on Western taxpayers. Western funding to keep Ukraine at war is currently estimated at around $100 billion a year, or nearly $8.5 billion a month. But for Ukraine to pose a serious challenge to Russia, the West would have to increase that spending by half to $150 billion a year, or about $12.5 billion a month. Such was the level of spending in mid-2023, when Ukraine actually did gain the upper hand on the front. But by the end of 2023, spending had dropped to $4 billion a month, and the bill to provide additional aid was stuck in the US Congress, costing Ukraine lives, territory and momentum. Western experts claim that if all the frozen Russian assets are not confiscated and handed over to Kiev, Ukraine will most likely lose the war, and for the West, the cost of defeat would be much higher than bankrolling Ukraine's victory. I'm delighted to welcome our guest today, Professor Witold Wilinski. He's, the, he's at the Institute of International Economic Policy at the Warsaw School of Economics. Welcome to the programme. Good afternoon. Um, great to have you. We'll start off, before we develop some of the philosophical problems about issues about sanctions, the idea of sanctions, let's talk about Russia first. And um, the economy is predicted to grow this year. And this seems to be counterintuitive to our Western expectations when Western uh, sanctions were imposed. Is this a feature that sanctions aren't very good or they haven't been imposed strictly enough? Uh, what was, how do you... <laughs> so I think that uh, first of all we have to compare the Russian economy to the European economy and uh, to the US economy. Russian GDP represents only 5% of uh, the US and uh, EU GDP. So this is a relatively small country in terms of economy. And uh, mm, when we are analyzing the development of the GDP, the real growth, uh, we have to analyze in the same time uh, the situation in the Russian budget. And as we know, of course, we can observe a GDP growth, and uh, the predictions are around 2.5% for this year. But we have to know that uh, the budget deficit is growing in Russia, and uh, the Russian uh, Ministry of Finance is planning to, uh, to implement uh, mm, a higher corporate income tax and personal income tax. So we can see that uh, uh, the budget situation can have the influence on the population. And of course, when the population uh, see the results of sanctions, uh, the situation starts to be str more difficult uh, for Putin. That's one of the consequences. Uh, that's and uh, and uh, yeah, and sure. the second thing, uh, this is uh, how the growth is created. The growth is created uh, by the economy, which is based uh, on uh, weapon production. Yes, this is not a new footing, technology. Yeah, yes. This is uh, uh, not something which is uh, competitive uh, in comparison to other countries, to other economies. Um, 
you, you outlined the fact that by pressurizing Russian society, we can affect a change in the leadership. And that seems to be one of the primary uh, philosophical bases for sanctions. We, we pressurize the, the nation as a whole. We make it more um, impossible for them to work, to, to conduct a normal life, and then they will become so dis dissatisfied with their um, authorities that they will change them. Is that just a naive thing? Uh, Has that ever happened? In the case, in the case of uh, dictature, uh, this is very difficult to create such oppression. And uh, we can observe uh, in the past a similar situation, for example, in Iran or in the North Korea, uh, when the pressure, pressure of sanctions uh, were very high, uh, uh, the society is uh, in a very difficult social condition, uh, but the society is completely blocked by the dictature. Um, but this, the, these dictatorships still exist, don't they? North Korea still exists? Yes. I I Iran, uh, China, whatever society we seem to uh, sanction against seems to find a way out or a way around our sanctions. Yes, but we are talking about uh, mm, 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 one thing. We are talking about uh, the growth of the GDP. Uh, and uh, where, uh, when we are analyzing the influence of sanctions, uh, we have to analyze uh, what we want to obtain. And uh, in the case uh, of the war that we have between Russia and between Ukraine, uh, uh, we have to know that from the Russian point of view, Russia is planning a long-term yes, war. And it can afford that. Yes. Uh, when you are planning a long-term war, you need the money for this war. Uh, so uh, th this, is, uh, this is the first point. The second point, you need uh, the production of weapon and uh, you need for this the technology. So uh, when we are analyzing the, the effectiveness of uh, sanctions imposed uh, by EU or imposed by US uh, uh, during this war, uh, we can see that uh, step by step, uh, Russia has more and more difficulties, for example, in the case of exportation of oil in the case of exportation of gas. And uh, as you probably know, uh, in, the case of Rus in the case of Russia, around 30% of the Russian budget is based on, uh, on exportation yes. of uh, natural resources. So uh, when we are trying to block this exportation, uh, in the same time, uh, we are close to the situation when Russia, in the long run, will not have the money for this war. That's uh, that. That's quite simple. And of course, yeah. Uh, the uh, you mentioned the relative strengths and weaknesses of Russia as opposed, in comparison to the West. If it is such a small economy, why put sanctions on it? What's the rationale for for putting sanctions on a weak economy such as it is? Mm. Because uh, even if you are a small economy, you need the money for the war. Uh, the Russian economy in terms of, uh, if you want to compare to other countries, uh, the Russian GDP is a uh, little bit higher than Italian and smaller than uh, in France. If you want to compare to European countries, the scale is a kind of uh, medium country. Anyway, a medium country could be dangerous. So uh, we have to impose the have sanctions. To produce tanks yeah. instead yeah, yeah, of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. washing machines. What's the is our sanctions an effective way of pressurizing an economy? Um, they seem to have been um, blurring the blurring our pre pre percep perceptions rather about war and peace. We 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 think of war, tanks, weapons, bombing, peace is the absence of all that, and the sanctions seem to sit somewhere in the middle. And they, they seem to have blurred the distinction between outright war 
and outright peace, but are they an effective means of imposing our will on other countries? I think that... Uh, or can we think in the long term, I suppose? Yes, yes. I think that in the past we can find uh, some good examples of sanctions. Uh, one of the best examples, this is the Cold War. And sanctions imposed by US to Russia and to Eastern European countries. Uh, you can see that uh, during 80s, the Russian economy started to be completely ineffective in comparison to US. And uh, uh, the war now, this is a war which is based on technology. And if you want to develop the technology, you need the money. And uh, one of the arguments, not perhaps not argument, but uh, why one of the reason uh, of the collapse of the Soviet Union was the fact that uh, the technological gap between US and between Russia was huge. And uh, yes, yeah. they, could, they couldn't yeah. match it. Yeah. The, um, what about these, the effect of, we always think in terms of the imposition of sanctions as a, a weapon or against the human rights of a society. So um, it'll lead to great hardship, it'll lead to great uh, trouble problems on the everyday level for a society in the long run that, that's been blockaded like this. Um, is that something that we in the West or the, the, a society which imposes sanctions can think about or is it a very abstract term uh, thinking about causing uh, starvation, hardship to another society that isn't an overt war, uh, act of war? Of course, we can analyze uh, sanctions uh, from the ethical point of view. And uh, mm, a no. lot depends uh, of the support of the society, uh, the support for the war. And uh, we had a few months ago the elections in Russia. Uh, the support for Putin is huge, which means uh, yes. that <coughs> Russians support the war yes. because they are supporting Putin. So I do not have any ethical problems with sanctions. Uh, at yes, and, and it's something that the, um, the, the statesman who imposed sanctions on Germany during the First World War actually wanted to ramp up the intensity of the blockade because they, they knew that this was uh, an important weapon to use, but it had to be it had to make the German Empire, the German peoples, really suffer. Yes, but I, I think that in this case, uh, we cannot... And, 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 yes, I'm but, getting uh, to... The, the ethical problem wasn't a problem. No, the, no, the, the, the question yeah. is uh, that if, if, if the Russian society is suffering because of sanctions, I think that uh, the Russian society is suffering more because of the war than because of sanctions. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's yes, having their yeah. men folk uh, killed in, on the front. Yes, they, they lose more than uh, 550,000 people yes. during two years. What exactly is the position of a wartime economy? Just to, you, you mentioned the fact that we are stronger, many times stronger than the Russian economy. Are we on a war footing at the moment or are we in this sort of twilight world of being against Russia but not being at war with Russia. What, what, how would you judge our mentality here in Europe? Mm. We impose sanctions, of course. We're giving support to Ukraine. Yes, but we are. Uh, f first of all, we are giving a support uh, to an independent nation, uh, a nation that has uh, the right to decide in which. Uh, political, economical bloc uh, they would be. Uh, so this is the first point. Uh, your question, if, if this war, this is a European war, uh, of course, because uh, this is the war related to our values and related to the democracy. Uh, the system uh, in Russia 
this is a system which is very close to the system that they have during the Soviet period. So in terms of value, in terms of uh, liberty, uh, in terms of uh, democracy, human rights, uh, uh, they are completely different than uh, European countries. They are completely different than US. And there's a final question to you. Um, sanctions are a very, very, very long-term project, aren't they? They're, they're not over quickly. Are we, exp can, are we geared up mentally for that sort of many years struggle against, in this case, Russia, but we've had uh, uh, sanctions against Iran, uh, North Korea for decades, South, uh, South Africa. Um, these go for, for decades rather than y individual years. Yes, uh, but uh, what is important, uh, this is the scale of the sanctions and uh, what uh, type of sanctions we are in, uh, imposing. Uh, for example, the last uh, U.S. sanctions, uh, uh, the which are related uh, to Moscow Stock Exchange, uh, to national uh, security deposit, uh, have blocked uh, the possibility to set up uh, the exchange rate uh, between ruble, U.S. dollar and euro, uh, which is uh, phenomenal because all transactions that Russia is trying to do now, uh, they, they are doing with uh, Chinese Yuan. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of game changer. Another sanction uh, which, is, uh, which is new, this is the sanction uh, in the IT sector uh, uh, concerning the software uh, for, uh, for production plants, which can block the production. Uh, so it's a game of cat and mouse. Yeah, they, so they have a counter uh, Yes, all, and and the next, uh, which is interesting and which was imposed uh, a few few days ago, uh, is related to all new projects uh, uh, related to LNG gas in Russia. If Russia cannot export the gas to Europe if cannot export to China, because uh, they have a big uh, difficulties uh, during the negotiations now, they are trying to export uh, uh, as a LNG gas. So the new sanctions are trying to block this, uh, this way of exportation. Professor Witold Wilinski, thank you very much for coming on to our programme. Thank you. Great to have you. So that's all we have time for today. Do join us again for How We Got Here.